In this video, I will show you two ways to add USB 3.0 drivers into Windows 7 ISO or USB boot device. For example, without the drivers, when installing Windows 7 on modern computers, you cannot use the USB mouse or keyboard. The first way is to do it manually using DSM, and you don't need any extra tools. Before beginning, I have downloaded the Windows 7 ISO and the USB 3.0 drivers. You can find and download the original Windows ISO from the internet. Alternatively, if you have an MSDN subscription, you can download the ISO directly from Microsoft's My Visual Studio. First, mount the Windows 7 ISO to your computer. Next, create several folders. For example, I will create them in the D drive. The Vim folder to store the WAM files for modification. The mount folder to mount the WAM files and the drivers folder to store all the drivers you need to inject. Now, go to the mounted ISO drive and navigate to the sources folder. Sort by size to locate the largest files in this folder. You will see the files install.vim and boot.vim. We will add the drivers to these files. Copy these files to the vim folder you created earlier. Next, copy all the drivers to the drivers folder you created. At this point, you can observe the folder structure. The WIM folder contains two WIM files. The drivers folder holds all the drivers for injection. And the mount folder will store files and folders once a WIM file has been mounted. At this point, you can unmount the ISO image. Now, determine the index number of the Windows edition you want to install. Right click on the Windows Start icon and open PowerShell as an administrator. Run a command specifying the path to the install.vim file in the vim folder. You will see the Windows editions and their corresponding index numbers. For example, I will install Windows 7 Ultimate, which has the index number 4. Next, use a simple PowerShell script to automate the process. You only need to configure the path for the variables to match your setup. The script will use DSM and the configured variables to add drivers to the WIM files in the Vim folder. Please do not edit the code block itself. Once everything is configured, copy all the code and paste it into the PowerShell window. The process will begin automatically and may take several minutes to complete, so please be patient. Once finished, you will have two WIM files in the Vim folder with the drivers integrated. 
If you are using a USB boot drive, simply copy these files and replace the originals in the sources folder of the USB boot drive. If you want to create an ISO image, there are a few extra steps. To edit an ISO image, you can use a free and lightweight tool called AnyBurn. The free version is sufficient, so download and install it. Once installed, open AnyBurn and select Edit Image File. Browse and select the original ISO image. Navigate to the Sources folder, Sort by Size, and delete the boot.vim and install.vim files. Next, click the Add button to replace the deleted items with the files in the vim folder. Click Next to save the ISO file. You can either overwrite the existing ISO or create a new one, depending on your preference. Check the size of the ISO image file. As you can see, the ISO file with the drivers integrated will be larger than the original ISO image. The folders on the D drive are no longer needed, so you can safely delete them to free up space. Now, you can use this ISO to create a USB boot drive for installing Windows 7. For example, I will use Rufus to create a USB bootable drive. As you can see, it works now, and you can use the USB mouse and keyboard when installing Windows 7. The second way, we can use a tool to do it automatically. If you don't want to do it manually, you can use the Windows 7 Image Updater to create a Windows 7 ISO with drivers and updates integrated. This tool includes drivers for USB, network cards, and NVMe drivers. Select the original Windows 7 ISO image file. Select the destination to save the custom image file. The tool also adds Windows updates to the ISO file, so after installing Windows, you won't need to wait a long time for updates.
To save time during creation, I will select only one edition that I want to install, as selecting all editions could take several hours to complete. This process might take up to an hour to complete, so please be patient. Once done, go to the destination location to check if the custom ISO image has been created. As you can see, the size of the new ISO with drivers and updates is twice as large as the original one. You can now use Rufus to create an USB boot drive from this custom ISO to install Windows 7 with drivers and updates already integrated. That's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next videos.